has a new headache. The cap and crew of its flag carrier is going missing and not just anywhere but in Canada. What's really happening to the Pakistani flight attendants? Are they being kidnapped? Are they being drugged? Or are they escaping Pakistan? Sneaking into a foreign country and using the PIA as a donkey flight. The story begins with one Mariam Raza. She worked as a cabin crew with the Pakistan International Airlines. On the 26th of February, Raza was rostered for the PIA flight from Islamabad to Toronto. Raza reported for her work on time and she performed all her duties during the flight to Toronto. But once the plane landed in Canada, things got rather curious. Raza checked into the hotel room assigned to her by the PIA for her layover. But no one knows what happened after that. The next day, Raza was supposed to work on a Toronto-Karachi flight. But she never made it to the airport. When the authorities opened her hotel room, they found her uniform there. There was also a note. What did it say? It read, thank you, PIA. A cabin crew named Feza Mukhtar went missing in Canada last month, in fact. She also did not show up for the return flight. Reports say at least seven PIA crew members went missing in Canada last year while on duty. The previous year, the number was four. The stories are all the same. A flight from Pakistan lands in Toronto. The crew checks into a hotel for their break or what's called a layover. And then the day comes for the crew to return. They are rostered on a flight to Pakistan, but a crew member fails to show up at the airport for the flight. By now, I guess, searching the hotel room, etc., has just become a matter of protocol. The story has repeated itself way too many times for the PI to not know how it ends. In fact, if I would suggest when flying to Canada, they keep a crew or two separate a spare you know, you never know when one slips away. PIA is fast becoming an escape flight out from Pakistan. In fact, in December 2023, Ayaz Qureshi disappeared in Canada after working on a flight from Lahore to Toronto. The same month, two other Pakistani flight attendants disappeared in Toronto. Their names are Khalid Afridi and Fida Shah. Both were on flight PK-772. Both did not show up for the return flight home. In July, Muntazir Mehdi went missing from a Toronto hotel. Pakistani flight attendants are using the PIA like a donkey flight to flee their fate, it seems. They are probably seeking asylum in Canada. Reports say one of the crew members who managed to seek asylum in Canada after having slipped away during a layover could be helping out other colleagues, showing them the route out of Pakistan, perhaps, and towards what in all likelihood is a better life. What is Pakistan International Airlines doing about it, though? It has reportedly come up with new policies aimed at stopping the disappearances. Number one, the airline is only assigning crew aged 50 and above, 50 and above, to serve in Canada, bound flights. What's the logic? Old women are less likely to start a new life in a new country. Clearly, the people in PIA don't know much about women. Must I remind them that the latest case involved a senior crew member, someone who had worked with the airlines for over 15 years. And now she is nowhere to be found. You know what they say? It's never too late to start over, especially when starting over involves putting an end to a not-so-dreamy life in an economic disaster called Pakistan. FYI, in December last year, some 7,000 PIA employees reported that they had not received their salaries. No wonder why they are escaping uh, and they are escaping to search for a better life. In February, reports in Pakistani media said the PIA has now started confiscating the passports of the crew members on arrival in other countries. Absolutely bizarre, isn't it? Once the PIA crew clears immigration and customs checks, their passport is handed over to the station manager. And there is more, by the way. 
The PIA reportedly is also increasing the monitoring of crew during layovers. How exactly, you ask? The airline is working closely with the hotel security to ensure that all crew members have checked in. Also, that no crew member stays out of the hotel premises at night. Even during the day, their movement is restricted. Sounds like a prison sentence to me. You know, a lot of people choose to become flight attendants just so that they can see the world. But the PIA is fast becoming a reflection of its home country, giving its crew more reason to use the airline as a means to escape Pakistan. Is Pakistan smuggling in nuclear cargo from China? What happened recently forces me to ask this question. Indian security agencies seized a Pakistan-bound ship. What was it carrying, you ask? Well, something that Pakistan claims to be commercial goods. But that is not what Indian authorities have discovered. On inspecting the cargo, they found equipment that could be used in nuclear and ballistic missile programs. This is what happened. A Malta flagged ship sailed from China. It was on its way to Pakistan. The ship weighed over 22,000 kilograms. 22,000 kgs. And as the ship was on its way to Karachi, Indian security officials received an intelligence input that something was amiss. And soon, custom officials stopped the ship at Mumbai's Navasheva Airport, Navasheva Port. They inspected the cargo, so did a team of Defense Research and Development Organization, and what they found sent alarm bells ringing. The ship was carrying a computer numerical control machine. It was originally manufactured by an Italian company. Now, what is this machine and why is it a cause of concern? You see, a computer numerical control machine is essentially used for manufacturing, most commonly for machining met metal and plastic parts. It's fully automated using computer programs. The efficiency, consistency and accuracy these machines offer cannot be attained manually. You just need to feed in the commands in the system and the CNC machine will do its job. And that is what makes it dangerous. The system can very well be used to produce dangerous weapon components, even nuclear ones. So for all we know, Pakistan may be importing CNC machines to boost its nuclear and missile programs, and it will not be the first one to do so, by the way. North Korea also did the same. And such is the fear that CNC machines have been included in the Wassenaar arrangement for those unversed. Uh, the Wassenaar arrangement is an international arms control regime. It was basically established to boost international security and track the exchange of conventional weapons and dual use technology. India is one of its 42 members. So when it got to know about the secret deal between its neighbors, India cracked down on the cargo ship. And it had every reason to do so. Consider what the authorities have discovered. There were multiple discrepancies in the shipping details, in the documents, such as the bills of loading. The consigner was mentioned as Shanghai JXE Global Logistics Company Limited. And the consignee was Pakistan Wings Private Limited of CR Code. But this was a lie. An evasion tactic basically to hide the true recipients. And on deeper digging, it was found that the consignment was shipped by Taiwan Mining Import and it was meant for Cosmos Engineering in Pakistan. And this is not the first time this Pakistani defense supplier has come under fire, by the way. Cosmos Engineering has been on India's watch list since March 2022. Back then, the Indian authorities intercepted a shipment of thermoelectric inst instruments. And this was again at the Navasheva port. 
The equipment was again Italian made. The question is, is there a pattern here? Well, it seems quite likely going by the developments. Pakistan is trying to get its hand on forbidden equipment from the West, it seems, and China is serving as its conduit. There have been multiple instances. In the year 2020, another Pakistan-bound Chinese vessel carried an autoclave concealed as an industrial dryer. It is again a crucial tool used in missile production. Just last year in June, the U.S. Bureau of Industry and Security sanctioned three Chinese companies. One was General Technology Limited, which supplied the autoclave I just told you about. The others were Beijing Luo Luo Technology Development and Changzhou Utek Composite Company. These firms were caught supplying missile applicable items to Pakistan. And now comes the CNC machine row. Pakistan is crying foul. It is claiming that the ship merely carried commercial goods. The Pakistan Foreign Office, in fact, has stated that the reports of the seizure are misrepresentation of facts. What about China? China also claiming that the consignment did not contain military or dual-use technology. But is that even surprising? On the global platform, both Pakistan and China pretend to be committed to international conventions then what explains the interception of covert shipments? This is hypocrisy at its best. And let's now shift focus to India, where a shocking case of gang rape has shed light on a key issue. The grim reality of crimes against women in India. Over the weekend, a horrific piece of news shook the country. A Spanish woman was allegedly gang raped and then robbed in Jharkhand's Dumka area. This is located around 300 kilometers from the state capital. The incident spurred the authorities into action. Three people have already been arrested. This incident, as I said, has spurred calls to action. Now, this is the sad reality. Women are not safe. In case it wasn't clear, women don't want SOPs, they want basic safety. As the country goes to the polls this summer, can our leaders promise us safety? Here's what happened in Jharkhand, just for more details. The Spanish woman, aged 28 and originally from Brazil, has been traveling the world with her husband on their bikes. The couple already covered 1.53 lakh kilometers across 63 countries. And last July, they crossed over into India from Pakistan. Their Instagram posts showing pictures from their travel experiences are to Spiti Valley, the Karnimata Temple in Bikaner, Jaipur, and even parts of South India. On Friday night, social media was abuzz when the travel vlogger took to her Instagram saying that she has been gang raped by seven men. The couple published the video describing what happened on their joint Instagram account where they post images of their travels around the world by motorcycles to almost 200,000 followers. The video is no longer available. The woman alleged that the incident took place when she and her partner were spending the night in a tent. The couple said that they had camped out near the site where they were attacked because they could not find hotels nearby. She said in Spanish, we are in the hospital and something happened to us that we wouldn't wish on anyone. Her husband also was assaulted. He said that his oral cavity was severely damaged. In a separate video later, they appeared with bruises on their face and thanked their followers for their support. The superintendent of police in Dumka, Pitambar Singh, Kervar reported that a police patrolling team had discovered the couple on the side of the road around 11 p.m. The patrolling team suspected that something had happened to them, but since the couple was speaking in Spanish, the police could not quite figure out what they were saying. The couple was then taken to the near nearest hospital, assuming that they needed some medical attention, and it was then that the authorities learned about the alleged crime, which immediately prompted an investigation. Three men were arrested and sent to judicial custody by a court. The identity of four others has also been confirmed and the hunt is underway for them. The three accused in custody have admitted to attacking the couple and have also confessed to the gang rape. 
Meanwhile, the Spanish Foreign Ministry has said that it was sending staff to the area and had been in touch with the authorities. Its Brazilian counterpart said it had sought contact with the Brazilian citizen through its embassy in New Delhi and was available to give every form of uh, help applicable. But there has been a huge outcry, of course, following this incident. The outrage even reached the Jharkhand State Assembly. The opposition party claimed that law and order machinery in the state had collapsed. They demanded strict action against the police. The National Commission for Women in India also expressed its anger. Even celebrities have taken to social media to condemn the incident and call out the lack of safety for women. It is a fact that we cannot ignore, unfortunately. The annual crime report paints a rather grim picture. According to the National Crime Records Bureau, there has been a harrowing surge in crimes against women in India. Over 4,000 cases were registered in 2022 alone. You know what that means? There are nearly 51 cases of crime against women filed every hour. There has been an escalation in these cases from 2021 and 2020. The rate of crimes against women per lakh population stood at 66.4, while the charge cheating in such cases was logged at 75.8. The majority of crimes against women, cruelty by husband or his relatives, kidnapping and abduction, Assault on women with the intent to outrage her modesty and rape. With 14,247 cases in 2022, the Indian capital registered the highest rate of crimes against women. It is way above the country's average rate. Among the states, Uttar Pradesh registered the maximum cases of crimes against women in the year 2022, followed by Maharashtra, Rajasthan, West Bengal, Madhya Pradesh, Women's safety, you see, is a critical issue that requires political will and action. Unfortunately, most political parties seem to prioritize offering incentives over addressing this issue. It is time for responsible parties to prioritize women's safety as a top election issue. As citizens, we need to come together and demand answers from both the government and the opposition parties. Women are not looking for handouts. They want the assurance that they can safely step out of their homes. And we must hold our political leaders accountable. We must ask them what they plan to do to ensure women's safety if they come to power. Just like employment, just like inflation, women's safety should be a key election issue. And perhaps the first step would be to ask ourselves how political parties view women as equal citizens or as, or as recipients of charity.